I just visited uh, a little uh, incredibly innovative uh, manufacturer here that works for Tesla and others in some really uh, high performing, uh, high quality manufacturing. Uh, but I talked to us also about the fact that uh, they are going to be impacted if uh, a uh, shutdown of the rail system continues uh, for much longer. And that's uh, something that is an impact right across the country from workers to businesses to farmers to, to consumers who are, are going to be impacted. That's why uh, we are on this. We're taking it so seriously. The minister is engaged directly. Uh, we, are, uh, we are not taking this lightly, obviously, because Canadians across the country are worried about it. And we will uh, have more to say shortly on uh, what we're doing to make sure uh, that the right solution is found quickly for the economy. Merci tout le monde. Collective bargaining is not easy, but when parties put in the work at the table, our economy is always better off as a result. In the current collective bargaining negotiations between Canadian National Railway, Canadian Pacific Kansas City and the Teamsters Canada Rail Conference, an agreement has so far proven elusive. After months of negotiations, CN Rail and CPKC began lockouts while Teamsters Canada rail workers at CPKC went on strike at 12.01 a.m. this morning. These collective bargaining negotiations belong to these parties, but their, eff but their effects and the impacts of the current impasse are being borne by all Canadians. And there is an impasse. As Minister of Labour, I am using my authorities under the Canada Labour Code to secure industrial peace and deliver the short and long-term solutions that are in the national interest. Under Section 107 of the Canada Labour Code, I've directed <clears throat> the Canada Industrial Relations Board to assist the parties in settling the outstanding terms of their collective agreements by imposing final binding arbitration. I have also directed the Board to extend the term of the current collective agreements until new agreements have been signed and for operations on both railways to resume forthwith. Millions of Canadians rely on our railways every day. Workers, farmers, ranchers, commuters, small businesses, miners, chemists, scientists, the list goes on and the impacts cannot be understated and they extend to every corner of this country. Our railways have impacts on the water we drink with the shipment of chlorine and they help, and they help grow the food we eat with potash mined for fertilizer. It is the government's responsibility to ensure industrial peace in this critically vital sector. Thus, we will be examining why we experience repeated conflicts in the railway sector and the conditions that led to the parallel work stoppages we are seeing. Canadians must be assured that their government will not allow them to suffer when parties do not fill their responsibility to them at the bargaining table, especially when, where worker and community safety is at stake. Negotiated agreements have and will always be the best way forward. Collective bargaining is how the strongest, longest lasting deals are made, deals that are good for unions and employees al uh, employers alike. Canada is a trading nation. Our government will do everything in its power to preserve the stability and certainty that our railways and entire economy are renowned for the world over. Merci beaucoup, I'll, I'll be happy to take your questions. Thank you. I understand we have about 15 minutes for, for questions. We'll start with uh, Nojud Amali, Canadian Press. Hi, Minister. Um, when the WestJet strike happened, um, the order for binding arbitration didn't end the strike. Can you uh, confirm whether this order will actually end the strike, the lockout in this case? We are confident that it will. When? The, uh, the Canada Industrial Relations Board now has its own process to follow. Uh, it will be following that, um, and that will extend over the coming hours and couple days. Yep. Okay, so, sorry, can, can you clarify what's going to happen now, as in when do you expect it to end? Like, will, will railways be operating tomorrow? And who do you, and do you blame the railway companies for the lockout today? The process is that I direct the Canada Industrial Relations Board. They, of course, are uh, independent body, an arm's length body, they have a process that includes and requires consultation with the parties. They will be doing that um, and rendering a decision, I hope, very quickly. Marie Chabot-Johnson, Radio-Canada. 
If the process goes to the end of arbitration, how long could it take? And I was hearing you say that you believe it will be useful for people to return to work, but will you um, legislate a return to work or are you going to wait for the process to unfold? Well, this is a very technical issue, but the process will end and we're quite confident in this. And yes, there will be back to work legislation. Are talking about days, weeks? It won't go over two days, probably. There's an independent process. It's an, it's an admi independent administrative tribunal that will uh, rule on this. So why didn't you offer a special uh, law, a special act? Because the House of Commons is not sitting. I just want to go back to one of the previous questions. And I'm curious what the actual wording of the order is, because going back to that Industrial Relations Board decision from earlier this month in the mm -hmm. WestJet case, they said that unless the order explicitly lays out either uh, that uh, the lockout has to end or that workers aren't allowed to strike, that both sides can continue those activities. So can you lay us out for uh, what exactly the, uh, the wording of the order is? Well, you'll be able to, to get that, I'm sure, online. Uh, uh, at the appropriate time. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure how those uh, processes unfold, but fundamentally we are uh, asking the board to direct a re resumption of activities and a return to work uh, at the railways. We are asking them to, uh, in, uh, to begin the process of binding arbitration and to extend collective agreements uh, that are currently in place. Okay, but what does that mean? Are, there, are, are you ordering the, the, the lockouts to end and simultaneously ordering the workers that they're not allowed to strike? And also, how does that apply to CEN that hasn't been issued a strike notice yet? I'm ordering the three things that I just told you I was ordering. Resumption of activities, um, uh, binding arbitration process, and extending the collective agreement. Olivier Fallon, Poisset, TVA. What did the Americans tell you, and uh, do you fear to have a bad reputation because we're going through this arbitration today? Well, here's what's happening. There is no corner of the country that will not be affected by a work stoppage in the rail sector. I've spoken to all the uh, economic stakeholders, and what I have in mind here are the unionized workers in other sectors as well. For example, the forestry sector. They also have to uh, expedite their products. The potassium sector. Every day, they're losing market share to Russia. So in the current situation with Ukraine, you can imagine that this is extremely concerning. In my county, I have a pulp and paper mill. Well, uh, if those companies need to shut down their, their machines, the workers are the ones that are uh, affected negatively and oftentimes unionized workers. So our economy is highly dependent on this. So yes, of course, we want to be very good clients, very good providers on a continent-wide level, even internationally. We want uh, things to be predictable and reliable. And that's why, as I indicated, we are going to examine why we have these threats of work stoppage uh, repeatedly. And more particularly today, why are we facing a double work stoppage? Two companies in parallel, and for a very long time now, we haven't seen this type of thing in Canada. So do you fear that the NDP tear up its agreement with you? On noon, uh, Mr. Singh was with the Teamsters and said that he would not accept any interference. Well, I'll let Mr. Singh speak for himself. And all I have to say is that uh, I'm working very closely with uh, union leaders throughout the country. I've consulted with nearly everyone that I've been able to consult with, uh, with provincial governments, with um, stakeholders in civil society, and I believe that there is a consensus. Yes, of course, we believe in the collective bargaining process, but we equally believe that Canada and Canada's economy cannot wait for an agreement that needs to be concluded. And when there's a, an impasse, more specifically. 
CTV. Ça ne semble pas être très clair. To work and, and trains running again. And so we've heard from industry groups on the economic impacts here, tens of millions of dollars a day. What will the federal government do to mitigate economic impacts? Well, we are acting, uh, I think you would agree, um, we gave negotiations every possible opportunity to succeed uh, right up until uh, midday today. I spoke to the mediators. I, as you know, visited with the parties in Montreal and in Calgary in the prior days. Made, it came to my own conclusions, but uh, we have an impasse here. Um, we wanted to give these negotiations uh, the absolute possibility of uh, concluding successfully. We see little prospect of that currently, and I think I was pretty transparent uh, and open about that. So now, what do we have? We have the tools that the law, that Parliament has given the Minister of Labour. Those tools include the ability to direct Um, the the uh, CIRB to uh, do the three things that I just uh, indicated and then uh, to issue an order. Uh, we're hoping and confident that they will do that with dispatch, but they are an independent agency and uh, they will do uh, what they have to do uh, to make sure that they follow all, all of their procedures. Um, at the end of that, I think you'll have uh, the, uh, the clarity that you're seeking. What kind of pressure did you face from your American counterparts? What did you hear from them in those conversations? Well, actually, I had very helpful conversations uh, with uh, American counterparts, with American businesses, um, with uh, all sorts of stakeholders in the U.S., who have all, of course, gone through this very similar um, uh, processes and have uh, had similar uh, work stoppages or, or, or uh, labor conflicts. Uh, so uh, I would ca categorize it uh, or characterize it as helpful advice, uh, understanding, uh, and those relationships are extremely strong, and uh, I know the government is very grateful for them. Uh, Laura Dillon Kane, Bloomberg. Thanks for taking our questions. Um, so when it comes to the CEIRB, I'm just wondering what changed between last week and now in terms of your decision to order them to uh, impose binding arbitration? Thank you. Good question. Uh, I turned down, as you know, a, a request from one of the parties to um, do something similar last week um, because we believe in collective bargaining. We believe that uh, with a deadline looming that we could see Uh, some progress uh, at the negotiating table. We wanted to go through that deadline uh, to give our mediators, who, by the way, I need to uh, say thank you to. These people uh, have spent long days and nights in hotel rooms with uh, union and company negotiators and uh, done their uh, very best, and they have a very high uh, level of success. Um, so we wanted to give it every chance of success, every chance to succeed. Uh, unfortunately, in this case, we weren't able to. Uh, and that is why we have uh, come to this decision today. Did the decision have anything to do with your certainty that the CIRB would approve this request for binding arbitration? In, in a sense, why not um, approve it ahead of this stoppage happening and this damage that's already being wrought to the economy? Well, there is a right to strike um, uh, uh, in this country. Um, There are obviously mitigating factors, um, <laughs> the, the ones I uh, just finished describing, I think, at great length. Um, the fact is that we believe in collective bargaining. We believe in the ability of workers and their unions to sit down at tables and freely exercise their ability to negotiate. Um, and we wanted to give every uh, minute of possibility for that process to succeed. Catherine Levesque, National Post. Hi, Minister. In the same vein of questioning, um, you had this option on your table a week ago and you rejected it. Can you explain why exactly and were you still hopeful as of yesterday that there would be a, an agreement? Well, I think as, as I just said, um, we were hoping to give this process every chance of success. We had our best mediating teams on the ground with the parties. I myself visited uh, with both the companies and the unions uh, involved here. Um, and we gave them every, every possibility and every resource. Unfortunately, um, we are at an impasse 
there is no question that we are at an impasse. The issues remain, the, the parties remain very, very far apart on these issues. Uh, they're important issues. They're important issues to uh, members of those unions. They're important uh, issues to the employers. It's not my job to pick sides here. We're interested uh, solely in making sure that uh, labor relations in this country remain on a sure footing um, and that this very unusual situation where we have two national railways uh, who have suspended operations, um, uh, that that situation not be prolonged uh, unduly. And just as a follow-up, is Canada still considered to be a reliable trade partner? I think uh, folks all over the world, I've spoken to uh, you, many U.S. Uh, business people over the last uh, little while, uh, I can assure you, uh, many of whom, by the way, have important investments in this country, and I can assure you that Canada is uh, not only a destination for uh, investment uh, and a place where the rule of law, including the rules of law that we are applying today, um, uh, prevails, but uh, the future looks uh, very, very bright for investment in Canada, and that's one thing I've come to learn uh, throughout this process. Merci tout le monde. Oh, Minister, we've got oh. Global Mail and Toronto Star here, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, we've got Global Mail and Toronto Star here would probably like to get in, so, uh, Marika, there you go. Hi, me. Minister, Marika Walsh with the Global Mail. Thank you for your patience. Um, uh, the unions were opposed to binding arbitration. Mm -hmm. uh, have you communicated this to them, and do you know if they plan to challenge this order in court? Like, I, are they going to cooperate? I, I've been in regular contact with uh, the Teamsters. Um, and, of course, so those channels of communication in person, on the phone, uh, have been wide open and uh, obviously consult with other labour leaders as well across the country. As for uh, how they uh, react to this, you, that is obviously something that belongs to them. But to be clear, you don't have any guarantees from them that they won't challenge this or take this to court. What I have a guarantee of is a power conferred on the Minister of Labour by Parliament that um, exists, I can't imagine it exists uh, or, or, or would be a more, more practically uh, or uh, appropriately used than in the case of two national railways ceasing uh, their operations. So we're very, very confident about uh, the path that we've uh, uh, selected here. Um, and uh, as for the parties, either party or all three parties, uh, you'll have to get their reaction. I think we'll wrap with Stephanie Levitt's Toronto Star. Hi, Minister. Thanks for taking our questions. Um, you alluded to this unusual situation. You alluded to wanting to figure out why and how it happened. Can you elaborate on that? What, what is it that you're thinking? There's some who argue, for example, that Transport Canada regulations haven't been updated fast enough to keep pace with the needs of workers. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you're exploring here? Um, look, we're having a dual, um, a parallel stoppage in two very important pieces of Canadian infrastructure, and I think you've all seen uh, what is the purported impact on our economy and on the people of Canada. Um, this happens all too frequently, but um, as uh, I think my mother would say, the fact that there's two, that kind of takes the cake. So um, as Minister of Labour and as the person responsible for industrial relations um, in this country, at, uh, in federally regulated sectors, I think it's incumbent on me and on the government to inquire as to why this might be happening and perhaps offer some uh, solutions uh, to prevent it happening in the future. And I guess just as a follow-up, I know we've all been seeking clarity about when the trains will move again. What mm -hmm. is your expectation for when the trains will start running again? Again, if, you, if you're sensing a any um, lack of clarity on that for me, it's because we, there is an independent agency tribunal involved here uh, who must follow their own process. Obviously, I'm acting at a very early stage uh, here and uh, hoping that they will act with similar dispatch. Um, and I assume that the trains will be running, you know, within days. But uh, again, I want to be deferential to the process that will unfold here.